Arterial blood gas sampling, or ABG, is a commonly performed procedure that involves the direct puncture of an artery to obtain an arterial blood specimen for analysis. It allows us to assess gaseous exchange levels within the blood, related to the functions of the respiratory, metabolic, or renal systems. ABGs provide a speedy bedside investigation that can accurately guide the management of critically ill patients. Therefore, it's an important skill to be able to perform well and with confidence. The indications for performing an ABG are fairly extensive. However, in the acute setting, the main reasons include measuring the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the critically unwell patient to identify the presence of respiratory failure. Additionally, it allows us to determine whether the patient has type 1 or type 2 respiratory failure. So essentially, whether the problem is one of oxygenation alone or related to ventilation. ABGs can also guide respiratory interventions, such as when to commence mechanical ventilation, as well as allow us to monitor a patient's response to these interventions. They can be used to monitor the acid-based status of a diabetic patient with ketoacidosis who may be receiving insulin infusion treatment. And also, they can be performed to identify metabolic, respiratory or mixed acid-based disorders. Absolute contraindications to performing ABG sampling from a patient's radial artery include an abnormal Allen's test. If the patient has known or suspected peripheral vascular disease of the limb, local infection or severe burns at the site of the planned arterial puncture, and also if the patient has an arteriovenous fistula or a vascular graft, in which case it's essential that we stay well away from these sites. Relative contraindications mainly consist of factors that can affect the patient's ability to clot, including medications such as warfarin, heparin and thrombolytic agents, and also if the patient has a severe coagulopathy. Because of the superficial nature of the radial artery, this is the most common location from where we obtain the sample. However, if there are concerns regarding the use of this site, then the brachial or femoral arteries may be used. But we won't be demonstrating the use of these sites in this video. As with all procedures, we start by introducing ourselves, then checking the patient's identity, explaining the procedure, and obtaining their consent. Having ensured that there are no contraindications to performing a puncture at the site of the radial artery, we then need to palpate the artery to ensure that there's a good pulsation. We will use this pulsation to help guide the insertion of the needle. Once we are happy that there is a good radial artery pulsation at the proposed site, we must then ensure that there's an adequate collateral arterial supply to the hand, via the ulnar artery. We achieve this by performing the Allen's test. This involves applying pressure at the site of the radial artery, as well as the location where the ulnar artery should be present. The patient then makes a tight fist, which squeezes the majority of the arterial blood out of the hand. We then release the pressure that is placed over the ulnar artery, and if there is an adequate collateral supply via the ulnar artery, then the hand should be reperfused almost instantly. So in this case, we know that our patient has a good ulnar artery supply. Therefore, during obtaining the ABG sample, if the radial artery were to become thrombosed and blocked, we know that this collateral supply would prevent any ischemia of the hand from occurring, which is obviously really important. If the patient's Allen's test was negative, revealing an absent or insufficient ulnar artery supply, then we would find an alternative site from where to obtain our ABG sample. we may now set up our equipment, either on a sterile trolley or a sterile tray. In performing an ABG sample, 
we need some gloves, preferably sterile, antiseptic skin solution, sterile gauze and dressing, a sharps container, and the needle and syringe. The needle that we are using has a protective sleeve, which can be placed over the needle once the sample has been obtained. So this allows it to be removed and disposed of safely without the risk of any needle stick injuries. The syringe that we are using here contains heparin, which prevents the sample from clotting. However, some kits may require the needle to be flushed with heparin before use. Some individuals prefer to inject local anaesthetic at the site where the ABG sample is going to be taken. However, if performed well, the procedure should be completed in a single puncture. So the additional puncturing of the skin and the discomfort from injecting the local anaesthetic itself essentially nullifies any benefit from using local anaesthetic in the first place. So in our case, we won't be using it. Once we are all set up, we position the patient's wrist so that it is slightly extended. This causes the radial artery to sit slightly more superficially, which makes accurately locating it a bit easier. We wash our hands with antimicrobial hand wash or gel, and then put on our gloves. We then clean the area with the antiseptic skin preparation. The radial artery is then palpated to identify the exact point to insert the needle. Now this part is a really important part of the procedure. As the more accurately you can determine the location of the artery, the better the chance of successfully puncturing it with our first attempt. In most cases, the radial artery is easiest to locate and access, approximately three centimeters proximal to the skin crease of the wrist on the ventral surface, lateral to the flexor carpi radialis tendon, and medial to the radial styloid process. When feeling the artery, try to visualize its course underneath the skin. Now that we're happy that we know the exact location where we want to insert the needle, we can unsheath the needle and hold the ABG needle and syringe between our thumb, index finger, and middle finger, similar to as you would hold a pen. Whilst palpating the artery proximal to the point where we're going to insert the needle, slowly introduce the needle at 45 degrees to the skin, in the direction of the artery. As the needle punctures the lumen of the artery, there will be a flashback and the syringe will automatically fill with bright red arterial blood, often in a pulsatile fashion. If you see an initial flashback, but the syringe doesn't start to fill, you have most likely passed through the back wall of the artery as well. So, gently withdraw the needle a small amount and the syringe should begin to fill. Once the syringe is completely filled, Withdraw the needle completely and immediately apply pressure over the puncture site using the sterile gauze. Pressure should be applied for a minimum of one minute, but this may require as long as five minutes, particularly in patients with coagulopathies or those who are on medications that affect their ability to clot. The needle should then be resheathed, detached from the syringe, and placed into a sharps container. The syringe is then capped and having safely tidied and disposed of our equipment and washed our hands, we can then take the ABG sample for analysis. It's important to closely monitor the patient to assess for any early signs of complications. If the puncture site is still bleeding, then usually all that is needed is a slightly more prolonged period of pressure. However, it's important to be aware of the possibility of more serious complications so that they can be recognized and acted upon promptly. In terms of complications, significant bleeding or a local hematoma may occur. And this is usually indicative that a laceration of the artery has happened. Large or expanding hematomas carry the risk of causing compression of local structures and potentially causing compartment syndrome. Other complications to be aware of include 
arterial vasospasm or occlusion, infection of the puncture site, injury to adjacent structures such as nerves or tendons, the patient may experience significant post-procedure pain, and lastly, there is the risk that the person carrying out the procedure may sustain a needle stick injury. So make sure you take all necessary precautions at all times. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great free content. Or if you want to make sure you know what you need to know for med school, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com for more great videos, learning forums, and MCQs.